Hello everyone, it's the Walrus Clown here. One day I was surfing around YouTube and found the original Hanna Barbera cartoon, Birdman in a Galaxy Trio from the 60s. It's been so long since they've rerun it on Cartoon Network that I've decided to review it starting with the Birdman segments. See you after the intro! So in 1967, Hanna-Barbera aired their first original superhero cartoon, Birdman and a Galaxy Trio on NBC, and consisted of two five-minute episodes of Birdman with an episode of Galaxy Trio sandwiched between them. I'll be talking about the Birdman episodes first. Every single episode almost always follows the exact same formula. Birdman's government contact, Falcon 7, would call Birdman and inform him of the villain of the day's villainous plot that almost always involved a ray of some kind. Almost every Hanna-Barbera supervillain used a ray of some kind. Kill the president with the freeze ray this, melt the ice caps with the soul ray that, have ED, don't worry, Dr. Shark's got you covered with his Viagra ray. Ray beams everywhere. Anyway, back to the formula. Birdman and his Raptor sidekick Avenger would go out to stop them. The villain would always catch Birdman in a trap by cutting him off from his power source, the sun. Birdman would tell Avenger to get away and succeed in doing so because the villain underestimates the animal sidekick. Then Avenger would come back and save Birdman and then Birdman would open up a can of bootwear all over the bad guy's ass and then put him in jail and then we'd end on a freeze frame of the characters laughing. Gee, I wonder if there is a way for a new villain to learn from this formula and change things to get an easy victory. After careful analysis of your many battles, I've concluded that 100% of your victories came from everyone underestimating that bird. But I, the great Catsby, will assure my victory after I take care of him with my Thanksgiving Ray! <laughs> Anywho, despite the obvious formula, the animation was fine for TV grade stuff of the era, but because of the shoestring budget that was necessary for cartoons to be profitable in this era, there were many obvious coloring mistakes and animation errors scattered throughout. It's not really distracting or anything, but it's there. Despite the overuse of the same formula every episode, it clearly had a lot of campy, Cheesy charm to it, and I found the Birdman segments to be pretty entertaining after I turned my brain off. Let's see if the same can be said for the Galaxy Trio segments. So, in between the two Birdman shorts, we'd find an episode of the Galaxy Trio. Vapor Man who could use vapors to various effect. Meteor Man who could change size somewhat. He only really used it to make his hands bigger, because if he could actually make himself bigger, he could just crush the bad guys. And then we have Gravity Girl, the only female in the Hanna-Barbera superhero lineup to do anything outside of getting kidnapped. And in fact would be the most powerful of the Hanna heroes if Bill and Joe ever bothered to learn how gravity worked. But they didn't, so we basically have yet another superpower being who does nothing but fire rays from their hands. As with the Birdman segments, the Galaxy Trio follow the formula of sorts. Unlike Birdman, they switched it up more than once. Basically, almost every episode would start with setting up what the villain of the day's villainous act was. Then the Galaxy Trio would get a call to go solve the problem via the Galaxy Patrol or a victim of the villain's plot. Then they'd use their powers to stop the villain, which would almost always be a robot taking over iRobot style or a relative of the current monarch dethroning him and becoming a dictator. In the technicals, we have the same problems that we did in the Birdman segments. Coloration and animation errors, but not to the point where it became bothersome. With the exception of Vapor Man's constantly disappearing, reappearing sleeves! Damn, that got annoying really fast! I didn't like them as much as Birdman. I found it to be enjoyable if my brain was turned off. There was a lot of action. And you know what? I think both these franchises deserve a revival. And by revival, I mean an actual revival as superheroes, not as attorneys at law. Cartoon Network and DC Comics screwed their audience by cutting Young Justice, Green Lantern, and Thundercat short. 
They messed up the Titans to the point where Toddler Titans is a more appropriate title, and the CN is in desperate need of a seriously minded action show as badly as we want one. And I'd love to see Birdman in action again with today's much better storytelling and animation. Make it happen, Cartoon Network! This is the Walrus Clown, signing out! A special thanks to Nietzsche Moon for voice acting for me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time! Thank <laughs> you.